Today we're going to tackle one of the more challenging concepts in social studies, and that is the topic of power distribution. Power distribution describes how a government is organized. It shows whether authority or power in a country is concentrated at one national level, like in a unitary system, or decentralized at the regional level, like in a confederation, or perhaps shared between national and regional levels, like in a federal system. To illustrate this concept, we're going to use a thing called circles of power. Each circle you see is going to show which level of government holds the authority or power in a country. The first system is a unitary system. Unitary is a system of government in which authority is centralized. Now, authority in a unitary system is concentrated at the national level. All power comes from one government, the national government. And in our illustration, you can see that we have one circle of power. One circle of power that shows that all the authority is centralized in one national government. Some notes here on unitary. Um, all authority is held at one national level. And so that means that all the laws in that country are all national laws. Now unitary is not the same as autocratic. A lot of students see, see the word unitary, they think uni means one, maybe one leader. No, unitary, uni means one government, not one leader. Okay, unitary system talks about how the government is organized, not how the citizens participate, not how much freedom people have. That is not a part of power distribution. In fact, lots of democratic countries are unitary, like England, for example. Now, unitary systems are simple and easy to organize, and these usually work best for small countries. And by the way, it's the most common type of power distribution in the world. Our next system is called confederation. A confederation is a group of loosely allied states or nations that come together for a common cause. A confederation is the exact opposite of a unitary system. In a confederation, all the authority is held at the regional level. The separate regions or states have all of the power in a confederation. So here we see a number of separate circles of power to show that the regional governments have all the authority in a confederation. Know that confederations are pretty rare. Um, the reason they're rare is because the connection between the different governments are fairly weak, so confederations tend to fall apart pretty easily. The best example today of a confederation in this world would be the European Union. Now there are some other groups that work kind of like confederations, although none of them are technically governments, groups like OPEC, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, the United Nations, and NATO. These would all be regarded as similar to confederations. Um, another example of a confederation would be the United States uh, back during the Revolutionary War. But that did not work very well for us. In fact, we had to throw that system out when we rewrote the Constitution. Our third system of power distribution is a federal system, which is a form of government in which several states or regions defer some powers to a central government while retaining a limited measure of self-government. Basically, a federal system has a combination of both unitary and confederation features. Regional governments keep some power, but there's also a strong central government that holds all of them together. In this illustration here, we show overlapping circles of power that show how both national government and state governments both hold power. And you'll see that they actually overlap in power as well. The best way to illustrate this relationship is to look at the government of the United States. In fact, the U.S. is the best example of a federal system in the world. We invented it in the United States. And here we're going to look at how um, the federal relationship works between the national government of the United States of America and one of our states, in this case the state of Georgia. So here we have a circle of power that represents the national power of the government of the United States. Another circle that shows the authority or power of the state of Georgia. 
and we have an area between the two that shows the shared power. If you haven't figured this out yet, that does in fact form a Venn diagram. So some of the powers or authority held by the government of the United States include such things as national defense, that's the military, the authority to protect the environment, authority to regulate interstate commerce, to negotiate foreign treaties, the authority to enforce civil rights laws, and the authority to print money. Some of the powers that would be held by the state governments, like the state of Georgia, include such powers as the power to make traffic laws, the authority to regulate education. That's right. Uh, schools are funded and regulated at the state level in the, in the U.S. The authority to make and enforce criminal laws and the authority to issue driver's licenses. Some of the powers that would be shared between both the federal government and state government will be the power to levy taxes and enforce workplace health and safety laws. Some notes here about federal systems. The United States, of course, uses a federal system. Many people think of a federal system as a combination of both unitary and confederation. The best of confederation in that individual uh, state or regional governments uh, do maintain a certain amount of power, but also having a strong central government like you would have in a unitary system. In fact, most laws come from the state level. This is a good thing because different states have different needs, different issues that they deal with in their particular region. Uh, the state of Alaska, for example, needs to have laws regarding the regulation of snowmobiles and, uh, and how one deals with polar bears. Uh, you don't need those same sorts of laws in a state like Florida, for example. Federal systems usually work best in large countries and tend to be too complicated to, to function in a small country. So there you have it, our three systems of power distribution, unitary, confederation, and federal.